Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming to Wakefield. Uh, to, uh, and hopefully you'll just be listening to me for a very short time this morning. Uh, Chris was very kind to uh, slip me in. Can you all hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That's good. Uh, I hope this will be an interesting announcement for you. But uh, first of all, <laughs> First of all, I thought uh, I'll take the opportunity just to borrow a couple of minutes and give you some just general obvious internet news um, as well. Over the next uh, few months, we're going to be uh, launching several new servers. Now, obviously, we have to replace equipment, same as people do at home with desktop machines, but uh, we're on a slightly tighter regime than you are. Uh, so we've got some new ones coming along. And the two that are most probably uh, of interest to my customers is that we will have a new uh, server dedicated for the web hosting. And we'll have another machine uh, that uh, we hope to actually start doing VPSs on, virtual private servers. So at that point, rather than someone saying, I have spent 5,000 pounds, here's a piece of equipment, would you put it in your rack uh, and look after it for us? we can actually say, well, what sort of spec do you want? And we can portion you processor, RAM, hard drive space. We give you access to it, and then you go off and you do whatever it is you want to do with your virtual private server. So some people have old machines, and they want to move them, but they don't want to replace them. So this is a, a cost-effective way of doing this electronically. So that's uh, good news, I hope. That's another service that we can offer you. And uh, with the new web server, it'll be more customizable by the customers. Now, we can't do with any and all of this. I'm sorry, I can't read this from up here. <laughs> <laughs> Age is affecting me. My eyesight keeps on changing. So, if that's all right, I'm going to sit down. Is that, is that still okay? <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Right. Just missed that little video now. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. <laughs> we can't do this. I can't do all these changes and things without customers. And you have to keep getting new customers. And thankfully, we do. Word of mouth ref references from our long term and loyal customers, some of whom I'm sure are in this room. Um, you know, for that, Paul before me would have said thank you to you. Uh, and I certainly say thank you for staying with us over all these years. Just to let you know, some of the projects that uh, Orpheus has been involved in, because uh, you're most probably not aware of all the things that uh, I get up to on the phone sometimes. Uh, we helped with the R Mini through to the R Mini X. We're a co-founder of the consortium that brought to you the Arbex 6 machine. Uh, you always see one on my stand and hear me talking about it, followed up with, go and talk to Andrew now and give him the money. <laughs> but, uh, so we were part of that. We've also done beta testing and just general encouragement with different developers and different bits of software over the years saying, well, could we have this, could we have that? This is what my customers have come back to me. So we, if someone has a whinge at me about something that isn't working, sometimes they actually do get back to the writers. So hopefully you've all benefited from that and had uh, bits of software improved. Again, none of this is possible without having you as customers. I hope that what this actually shows that uh, us at Orpheus do, whether it's for ourselves or whether it's with the various partnerships, we or I am very serious and dedicated to making suggestions, recommendations and projects working. Uh, and I hope that the way that we do this when I'm meeting you at the shows or you're talking to me at the phone is that we deal with you in a professional and sensible manner. Now, this leads me on to our next bit. And this is the main announcement uh, that this section was about. You must probably read, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to read this. I do apologise, but there's, there's a fair amount of uh, stuff to say to you. So you may have read in various sources that report on risk OS matters that a new company 
called Risk Cost Developments Limited, was recently formed at Farb in Chris House. This new company has two directors, myself and Andrew Ronsley. So, why have we done this? Over a period of time, requests come to me from private, personal, business, suggestions and propositions. Now, can you do this? Or what about that? Wouldn't it be nice if Risco S had this, <coughs> that or the other? Um, and this has gone on for quite a few years. It, it has been, as I say, very nice to hear these things. Some of them have been referred on to other people, and other things have been, well, yeah, that would be nice to do, if we do this. These projects have covered both software and hardware. Now, I'd like to explain to you what happened at the Southwest show this year. A specific request was made to me about another project again at the show. This is one that's uh, come up on more than one occasion. Again, it's for the Risk OS market. On this occasion, rather than saying to the person, well, that's going to cost £40,000, would you like to give me the money? And at that point, yes, I'll be only too happy to organise and arrange it uh, and get it all done. You have to remember, I'm not a programmer. So, uh, this has come out in talks before where people have asked me various questions and I had to say I can't answer that, so I'm not a programmer, but I'm happy to arrange things, to talk to people, to make phone calls, to make connections. This time round, as I say, I didn't say it's going to cost 40000 I actually came back and said to them, well, what is this project worth to you and how much would you promise to me to make it happen? There was a pause, there was some thought, and the answer came back, okay, how about two grand? So that's a sum of money. And possibly, if the project's going well and you're a little bit short, I can provide you with some more. So that was my very first uh, response from the person that had said, why don't you do XXX? So, with such a positive reply, I said, OK, I'll see if I can get this project off the ground and see what we can do. Uh, as you all know, I've partnered with Andrew on more than one occasion, so it seems sensible because Andrew's more technical uh, and I'm more chatty on the phone. If you've rung me up, you'll know. <laughs> so, we spent a few hours uh, over drinks, and we've done this before, other shows. So we had a chat, and both our companies, we feel, really do try to support Risk OS. We put things back in. Uh, there have been lots of benefits from the RMX6 project that has come back just to Risk OS itself. Uh, you're benefiting from that. So we felt that it was worth me going round a list of people that uh, I had drawn up to say, what is it worth to you? So I've spent an awful lot of time <coughs> calling people and asking if they would like to support this project. That's happened throughout March and through to the beginning of April. Now, we've had donations for this from £1,000 and up. And I've collected a lot of promises from people so that uh, we've been able to achieve some of the estimates that uh, Andrew and I have come up with for this project. I've continued to visit and call people, but it did become very clear that to handle all the money that has been promised and that we actually have coming in now, that we needed a company dedicated specifically <coughs> to run this. And also, more importantly, hopefully future projects as well. So on the 5th of April, very carefully planned to avoid April the 1st, <laughs> Risk OS Developments Limited <coughs> was formed. Our first project we intend to pursue is a large one. And currently we're looking into all the possibilities of how to achieve this before we go forward. 
So we're looking at programmers, we're looking at sources, we're looking at a time frame to bring the project in that is sensible. Do we use one programmer? Do we use several? Will this timing be several months or will it be a year and a half? Goals and reality, rarely do these things meet and work out to our expectations. So if you put your car in for a service, I'm sure you've all had this, I'm just having a service, oh bother, something else has gone wrong. So we're, gonna, we're going to have to <coughs> We've got various things going on here. We've got the project, we've got RISC-OS RISC -OS itself as it pertains to this project, and then we've got RISC-OS in general. We've also looked at the fact that uh, there are tools that enable the software programmers to do their jobs. So that has to be considered going forwards. How is that best going to be served? So we're not just looking at one particular product. We're actually looking really at a whole family of things. And that's why we've drawn this project together with this company with money that we've got coming in. I'm going to continue to talk to people regarding financial matters. Uh, although, as I said, our first financial milestone has been reached, we've got further ideas that we'd like to pursue. Andrew is going to take care of the technical side, and our other consultants are looking at as many of the aspects of this as we can. We're going to try and leave no stone unturned to make certain that once we get started, we are going to complete and deliver to the risk of world in general. What is the project? <laughs> well, it's almost as good as a game show, this. <clears throat> Whilst we know what we want to do, and we've got the finance available, we're still looking at recruiting staff, we're still doing the R&D. So a time scale is very difficult to pin down. Once we have those things in place, then we're going to make a formal announcement. <laughs> Not a new logo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that I can actually say, no, it's not a new logo. <laughs> the money we're talking about is most probably going to be the singest, biggest amount that has been spent in the Risk OS world. Since Risk OS Limited purchased their agreement from PACE some, what, 15, 20 years ago. So if you are considering or thinking that you might like to place an investment, then currently, for various reasons, only amounts of a reasonable size can be accepted. We will have a scheme for smaller amounts, but we will start that after announcing the project formally so that people know then what we're talking about. If you want to come and see me today, I have NDA forms. So if you are thinking of substantial investment, come and see me, sign the form, and then I will tell you <laughs> what this is about. <laughs> um, but by signing the form, that doesn't mean you have to sign another form called a check afterwards. Yeah, there is absolutely no way that we would uh, make anyone get stuck with something like this. Thank you for listening to me, and I hope it won't be very long until we actually announce formally this exciting project for everyone in full detail. So do enjoy the rest of the speakers and the rest of the show. Someone has a question. Yeah, so Risk OS Open here, we're, we're super excited about this, this is brilliant, uh, it's the sort of thing the community needs. Uh, so one question, uh, the projects you're running, do you do you see them contributing back into the community in terms of deliverables or in terms of contributions back into the source code as well? Hopefully both. Right, cool. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's more than one way of bringing the money from the I don't know what I see on some website, um, I mean, that's one way to get money. Yes, I, we won't discount anything. So if somebody has an idea about how to raise money, 
then come and talk to me. Maybe at the show, that's most probably not the best place to have that sort of conversation. Uh, but come, come by the stand. I've got plenty of cards. Pick up a card, give me a phone call. Uh, I would imagine I'm going to be very busy on the phone talking to lots of people. <laughs> We've had people placing um, money with us, uh, thousands, two thousand pounds, and upwards from there. So that's the sort of area that we're so talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, when you say investment, these are people who are putting the money in the expectation of getting not a financial return on the money, but a return in kind. So it's not, a, it's not just like the investor pension funding. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> No, that's right. We're taking this money. We will spend it as wisely as possible. Um, I will not be getting a new car. If you see that, then you can start <laughs> raising questions. Uh, but it is a limited company, so we have to file returns. We have to file accounts. Um, there has been problems in the past in Risk OS where money has uh, gone to projects and things have not happened. We don't envisage that happening with the best will in the world. I can't promise that, but I'm 99% sure otherwise I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today. Uh, so we will be delivering something to you, uh, and it will be for everybody. I may have missed this. What do the investors get in return? They get what everybody else gets. Do they get shares or...? They get shares. They have to have shares because of the way uh, taxes. Right. Now, most people, if you're investing in something and uh, you lose the money, you want to write it off against capital gains and things like that. It was the easiest way that we could find without getting very complicated yeah. uh, to do the setup of the company as it is a company's house. That information is available yeah. uh, at the moment. And they're the so, same class of shares as the directors have? Are they? There are A shares and B shares. Right, yes. The B shares are the general. Yeah shares, they are non-voting shares, there are three A shares which are the three main shareholders yeah. uh, of the company. Okay. Again, you can have a look at that at the company's house. You say you will not say what the project is until the money has been got together, to some extent. But what rough figure have you in mind at which point you would then say what the project is? You mentioned no, we, we know what the project. We know what the project is, and we've raised enough to do the project as far as we are concerned. There are ongoing things that uh, we still need to raise money for, but um, the project is now a go. We will announce what the project is once we have in place uh, the people. We know where and how we're going to do the project, and then. With those two in place, we should have an approximate timeline. What I would hate to do is say to you today, we are going to uh, rule the world, and this is going to happen in 18 months' time. Uh, at the moment, we have no time scale, and as with all sorts of projects, various things can happen. It may be that we don't get the staff available, and they're not sorted for another three months. At that point, if you've just promised something in 12 months, you've then got nine months to do it. That's why we've not announced it. As soon as we have staff employed to do this work, that's when we will make the announcement. But you do not have a definite target figure, simply a hopeful X donations. We, we, have, a, we have achieved our <laughs> first target that we wish to achieve. So that, that has been done. So but we now have ongoing things. Again, unfortunately, because I'm not going to say, tell you what the project is, I can't explain fully what's going on. Uh, not in general public at the moment. Sorry about that. And I think I've just uh, 